have no doubt that extraterrestrials could very well have populated. On August the 3rd of 2022, the Australian Space Agency announced that three huge pieces of space debris that crashed into the Australian sheep farm approximately 90 miles from the country's capital. Can you picture seeing a massive object hitting on your farm? Are you going to be scared? Without a doubt. Fear gripped Mick Miners. He stood stock still, staring wide-eyed at the big dark object that had recently landed on his property. As the nine-foot-tall jet black spike emerged from the ozone layer, a trail of smoke followed behind it. Everybody was expecting that day to be like any other day. Then suddenly, the tides began to turn, and here we are. But how could this happen? And to whom does it belong to? But most importantly, how can we prevent fatal accidents because of this interstellar visitor? Stay with us until the end to know. In August, as Mick Miners was driving a four-wheeler to herd sheep, he stumbled upon a black spike-like item that appeared to be over nine feet tall. For him, it could have been some charred tree or farming equipment. Mr. Miners remarked on the phone from his 5,000-acre ranch in a rural region of Southeast Australia. Pretty frightening, actually. I was quite surprised. It's not something you see every day on a sheep farm. Mr. Miners snapped a photo and forwarded it to Jock Wallace, his neighbor, who had found a similar unusual thing on his farm a few days prior, a piece of space junk. SpaceX confirmed in a statement released by NASA that the item was most likely the remnant of a trunk part lost from the Dragon aircraft while returning from the International Space Station by the Crew-1 mission in May of last year. If you believe you've identified a piece of debris, please do not attempt to handle or retrieve the debris, NASA announced. Waste hardware in space is what we call space debris. Most space junk disintegrates upon re-entry, and what's left usually ends up in the ocean. However, if more spacecraft, including those from private companies such as Elon Musk's SpaceX, enter orbit, the frequency with which they crash into Earth's surface may increase. When asked for comment, SpaceX remained silent. According to the Center for Astrophysics, astronomer Jonathan McDowell, it is not unusual to find space debris on land following an uncontrolled re-entry. Dr. McDowell stated, It was a bit surprising to me that so much of the trunk survived the heating process of re-entry. However, he emphasized that there was no indication that the trunk posed any special danger. According to him, it has become considerably more difficult to obtain technical information through private enterprises in order to assess risks in the new commercial area of space exploration. To better understand, did we simply get incredibly unlucky, or should we assume this from all the trunk re-entries if it occurs over land? More data is needed. When the burn is over and the capsule is released from the orbit, the trunk section, which contains the solar radiators, is separated from the main capsule portion and discarded. It typically burns up in the atmosphere over the open ocean, posing minimal risk to public safety, the Federal Aviation Administration stated. Some months ago, after pieces of a huge Chinese rocket fell back to Earth over the Indian Ocean, NASA's administrator Bill Nelson criticized China for not sharing exact information as its Long March 5B rocket returned to Earth. In addition, he said that all nations must communicate this type of information early to enable realistic projections of potential debris impact risk, particularly for giant lift trunks such as the Long March 5B, which poses a considerable danger. For days, People all around the world monitored the path of the rocket in case any of its pieces landed in a populated region. China's largest rocket, the Long March 5B, returned to Earth in what is known as an uncontrolled re-entry on its third mission. A SpaceX rocket staged completed an unplanned re-entry into Earth's atmosphere near Seattle last year due to a malfunction, causing what seemed to be a dazzling object to light up the night sky. Fragments of the exploding rocket made their way to a Washington State farm. After 22 days in orbit, the debris fell to Earth as atmospheric dust. Since the 77-ton Skylab, the United States' first space station fell from orbit in 1979 because of the extra drag force solar storms had given the Earth's atmosphere. The debris is the largest piece of space trash to crash in Australia. Mr. Miners found the space junk on July the 25th in a rural area of Australia. Dalgetty businessman Ron Lane stated that with one exception, residents weren't too concerned about the possibility of more space junk crashing down on their heads. If there are three we know about, there could be another 10 we don't know about, said Mr. Lane, speaking on the phone from his cafe. Mr. Miners claimed that his neighbor, Mr. Wallace, had reported the other debris he got on his area earlier in July. 
According to Mr. Miners, curiosity about the farm's discovery skyrocketed after Mr. Wallace called the Australian National TV and stated that three pieces of debris had been located. Mr. Miners, whose farm is located in the Numbla Vale area, said that then everybody found out and I've had about 300 calls. His farm is home approximately to 30 horses, 5,500 goat and sheep, and 100 cattle. A representative from the Australian Space Agency called him to inform him that scientists from their organization would be visiting his land next week. Take a look at it. His personal debris is approximately 10 feet tall, he claims. While he was unsure of what would happen next, Mr. Miner said that he appreciated knowing the preliminary information so far about how the debris had landed. He stated that he was glad to keep it, but would also consider a bit of recompense from the space program or the corporation exchange for returning the item. According to Sahid Mosashar, head of the London Institute of Space Law, an individual can only sue for damages if the debris has caused physical harm or property damage. Mr. Miner speculated, my guess is that they'll want it back. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. As I said, I'm a sheep farmer. Almost 23,000 bits of debris bigger than a ball orbit the Earth and the United States government keeps tabs on them all. The chance of collision is higher near the International Space Station since debris orbits the 15 to 16 times daily, according to the European Space Agency. The combined mass of all entities orbiting the Earth is much more than 9,600 tons. Hoiger Krog, chief of the ESA Space Safety Program Office, warned that some parts of space could become inaccessible in a few years if the accumulation of space debris doesn't stop. Although, space organizations typically plot rocket trajectories, such as any potential debris burns up in the atmosphere or falls into the ocean, the rapid increase in space activities has increased in the number of people on Earth who could be hit by debris from uncontrolled re-entries. Even more alarming is the fact that as much as 70% of all rocket bodies have fallen to Earth uncontrolled re-entries over the last 30 years according to a paper published in Natural Astronomy on July 11, by researchers who estimate there is a 10% chance of human death from falling rocket junk over the next decade. All major spacefaring nations are signatories to the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, and Article 7 of this treaty states that any government responsible for launching an object into space bears international responsibility for any damage that object may cause to another party upon its return to Earth. A claims commission or the diplomatic apparatus processes such situations. As an example, the USSR compensated Canada to the tune of 3 million Canadian dollars in 1978 after the faulty Soviet satellite Cosmos 954 fell into Western Canada, spreading debris out of its broken onboard nuclear reactor, along with approximately 370 mile long swath. Above 1,000 kilometers, debris will constantly orbit the Earth for a decade or more whereas below 600 kilometers, it will fall back within a few years. According to NASA specialists, if we want to try and solve the space debris problem, we have to start removing that type of object. The European Space Agency and JAXA have formed a partnership with startups to aid in the cleanup of space junk. In preparation for the first ever debris cleanup mission, JAXA has begun a six-month demonstration project, while ESA is collaborating with Swiss startup ClearSpace in preparation for a mission launch in 2025. Space junk is not only dangerous, but also expensive for satellite companies. That's all for today. Thank you for watching the video. Provide us with your feedback in the comments section. Stay tuned till the next video.